All right, welcome back to Trails of Cold Steel. We finished fishing. Uh, got a couple more fishing points. Uh, we need to go talk to the guy who's getting all the love letters. He's over back here near the storage shed. And we need to tell him that the three girls who bought flowers, none of them sent them to him, apparently. Tell me, did your investigation prove successful? Wait, don't tell me. Have you brought our mystery woman here? Oh, be still, my beating heart. Uh, yeah, about that. I wasn't able to find her in the end. You cannot be serious. Did you ask the florist as we discussed? I did, and I spoke to all three girls who purchased the Grand Roses. None of the reasons for doing so had anything to do with you. I can go into detail if you'd like. It matters not. If they do not concern me, then they simply are not my concern. I'm sorry that I wasn't any help, but there is one thing I'm curious about. Where could a girl get a Grand Rose if she didn't go to the florists? Well, there's no way to tell. Perhaps if the Grand Maiden is a noble, she could have an alternate source. However... My darling Vincent, I found you. Oh, I wonder if it's that girl. It is. <laughs> Who goes there? State your business. The cookies I baked ended up far more delicious than I could have ever imagined. So delicious that they could only be destined for the lips of my beloved, my elegant, dashing, darling Vincent. What could possess a person to approach another out of nowhere and say such befuddling things? Furthermore, I do not even have the foggiest idea of who you are. <laughs> Oh, but you do. What if I told you that I was the Grand Maiden all along? No way. I can hardly blame you for being speechless with joy. My real name is Margarita Dresden. The lovely Grand Roses I attached were grown by my family. So that's how you got them. If you're a part of the Baron Dresden's family, then could it mean... Oh, so you know the story. Your suspicions are indeed correct. I, Margarita Desden, hail from the same family line as the lovely Grand Maiden herself. It all adds up. Inconceivable. How could you, of all people, be related to the Grand Maiden? Where her beauty pales in comparison to your own? Look, darling, we're already completing each other's thoughts. And yours are oh so sweet. What you said couldn't have been further from my actual thought. <laughs> Even when you're shy, you're still so wonderful. Seeing the surprise on your handsome face made waiting to reveal my name entirely worth it in the end. Now, my beautiful Vincent, it is time for you to reply to my love letters. Will you enter a relationship with me? You may choose one of two replies. I would be delighted or there would be no greater honor. Sorry, how many options did you say you were giving him? This woman could hardly be more different than the demure maiden her letters made her out to be. My only answer for you is a resounding no. Now be gone and bother me no more. So that's how it is. <laughs> oh, just when I think you couldn't be more adorable, to think you're the sort of man who hides his true feelings away. I beg your pardon. There is no need to fear. Please, have one of these special cookies I prepared. One bite and you'll no longer feel the need to keep your innermost longings at a public view. <laughs> Don't tell me you've mixed something into your cookies. And that is for me to know and you to find out. Stay back. Do not come any closer. You don't just stand there. I need your aid if I'm to survive. I have no idea how to handle a situation like this either. Mm -hmm, don't worry, my darling. There may be a slightly bitter aftertaste, but it will be all be worth it in the end. I've been looking for you, Master Vincent. Uh, uh, Safira. Dare I ask what you are doing in a place like this? Uh, Safira, I beg of you, please free me from this terrifying situation. If I recall, you are my sweetheart's darling maid, are you not? So this is the Sephira he mentioned. Sarifa, not Sephira. As much as I hate to interrupt the situation at hand, I am afraid I must. Master Vincent, your presence at the upper class dorm is required at once. A delivery of the utmost importance from Count Florin, F Florald awaits you there. I see, then I have no choice. I must go at once. These cookies are a present for Master Vincent, are they not? 
In that case, may I ask you to leave them in my hands for now? I'll make sure he enjoys every last one of them later. V well, if you insist. So, Margarita... Begrudgingly handed over the bag of cookies to Sarifa. It seems as though Master Vincent has roped you into this nonsense as well. Hopefully this can dull some of the pain that this annoyance has surely caused you. Uh, thank you. With that, I wish you all good day. Let us go, Master Vincent. I indeed. Aw, poor Master Vincent. Although she seems very nice and loving. She does love him quite a bit. Although it's kind of in a kind of crazy kind of way, but... That may, may prove to be quite the obstacle. But no matter, there shall be plenty of opportunities to woo my darling from here on out. I believe it is time to get started on a new batch of cookies. Well, if she's persistent, if anything. Well, today's been full of unique encounters, to say the least. At least that request is over and done with. Alright, so let's go to the engineering building. We've got to go talk to George, I think. Oh no, it's Angel Gen Angelica. And George. Hey there, Reigns. Thanks for stopping by. Might I ask where Elisa and Laura are? Those two lovely flowers would do wonders in brightening up this dreary, dreary old building. Let's not make Reigns' life even harder than it already is. Uh, sorry, I probably shouldn't think out loud. <laughs> I still haven't talked to Angelica much, but she's definitely an interesting one. That aside, your request for me was to assist with testing out the Orbital Bike, wasn't it? So, what will I be doing? Oh, please. I can hear you making those room room noises before you even step through the door. I was not, but wait, does that mean... Yeah, we want you to ride the Orbital Bike. M me I can't deny that's what I wanted this to be, but I never expected it actually happen. I'll give you all the juicy details when we're actually ready to test. Uh, before we start, however, we want to make sure you have the time. So how about it? You ready to ride? Yeah. Okay, let's ride. <laughs> Good answer. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about the bike. Everything you see here is something that Angie asked me to build for her, and because of that, the bike's been fine-tuned to meet her specific needs. In a nutshell, it's all Angie. The engine, the brakes, even the handlebars. I see. As you might expect, she and that bike are practically symbiotic. When she's on it, she's a sight to behold. But because we've tuned it specifically to her, it's become a little too tough for anyone else to handle. <laughs> Think of her as an unruly horse. There's no denying she's a fine bike, but she doesn't play nice with strangers. Right. I am really hoping I make it through this alive. Don't scare him now, Angie. Crow's ridden it just fine. But I suppose he's been working on this bike since we started too. Compared to him, you're a complete beginner. Which is great, you'll have more of an objective opinion after you ride. I guess it makes sense why you asked me then. <laughs> Feeling a little nervous, are we? Let's head on over to the highway. Oh, Toa and Crow are here now. So, what are Toa and Crow doing here? <laughs> Angie and George told us you'd be doing this, so I came along to show some support and take some time off work. My reason isn't quite as sweet as little Toa's here. Like I said before, this bike's at least partially my baby. Think of it as an overprotective father, making sure you don't mess up and hurt my girl while you take her out. <sighs> Thanks. Crow, don't make me any more nervous. Don't worry, Ween. Just ignore everything this guy says. I do, and it's worked great for me. We can rebuild the bike, so stay focused on keeping yourself safe. Uh, right, thanks. Do you have much do you have much experience riding horses? Actually, yeah. You shouldn't have any trouble then. She's a whole different beast, but the basics of riding are the same. So, have fun. Uh thanks, Angelica, that helps. I won't let you down. Or will we? Okay then. That should be just about everything you need to know. I think I get it now. The three things you want me to test are getting moving, shifting gears, and coming to a stop, correct? Mm, that's right, we want to see how you handle everything. Let me give you a few pointers, you might not really get them until you're on the bike proper though. Uh, hit me. 
First off, first of all, you can't ride if you can't get moving, so let's talk about how you get started. Starting the engine is simple enough, so, but how smoothly you ride off will depend on how you can op how well you can operate the bike's clutch. Once you shift into first gear, open the throttle and then slowly and steadily release the clutch. Release the clutch slowly and steadily when I start moving. Okay, I'll try not to forget. Next up is switching gears. Before switching gears, make sure to pull in the clutch quickly and firmly. Once you shift gears, release the clutch slowly and steadily just like you did when you started moving. Uh, I can do that. The last thing you need to worry about is stopping the bike, which you probably want to know how to do. When you want to slow down, release the throttle and apply the brakes to both wheels front and back. You're going to want to give each one different amounts of pressure though. Apparently, or apply the brakes strongly to the front wheel and lightly to the back wheel. That should bring you to a smooth stop. Strongly in the front, lightly in the back. That's a lot to remember, but I think I can do this. Actually, I don't think I can do this. That is a lot to remember. Uh, that's the way. This is all about learning through experience and getting used to riding on the fly anyway. So, what do you say? Ready to go? Uh, you bet. Oh god. I wonder if I have to actually ride it or if he just does it on his own. Cause if I have to like have like seven different buttons I have to press in a right in a certain combination is not gonna be easy. Right then, first up is starting up the engine. Wow, this is pretty intense. And it kinda reminds me of how I felt when I first rode a horse. Right, let's push those nerves to the side and get going. So, all right, so I pull the clutch level, shift the first gear, twist the throttle. Now that I've done all that, all I need to do is let go of the clutch and I'll be moving. Angelica told me how to do this, but what exactly did she say again? I, oh god, quickly and firmly. Nope. Uh, and the engine stopped, maybe I wasn't paying attention. Ah, <sighs> start from the beginning. Alright, so it's slowly and steadily. Okay, release the clutch slowly, steadily. Now we're talking, this is great. Alright, well at least we don't have to do it manually, it's just through uh, prompts. Uh -huh, there he goes. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he gets back. He's gonna love it. <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, I don't know how to switch gears. I wasn't paying attention. I was not paying attention. Wow, this feels amazing. I'm amazed at just how stable and smooth the ride is too, considering how heavy it is. Okay then, I think I'm used to this speed now. Let's try switching gears. Right, first I need to roll off the throttle, then I need to pull in the clutch, change gears, then release it. Angelica told me I had to handle the clutch a specific way during all this, but was it again? Pull in quickly, release quickly. Oh right, I need to pull in the clutch quickly and firmly, then change gears. After that, I need to release the clutch really fast. Nope, that definitely wasn't right. It stopped acting up now, but I feel pretty bad about getting that wrong. Ah, I maybe release the clutch... slowly. Well, we know how to brake, but... Going this fast really does feel great. I get why Angelica loves this so much. Well, the fun's got to come to an end eventually. It's probably about time to stop. Obviously, I need to hit the brakes, but how much pressure do I put on them? While well, strongly at the front, lightly at the... No, lightly at the front, strongly at the back? Oh god, I don't remember. Uh, strongly at the front, lightly at the back. Hmm, I'm pretty sure Angelica says strong at the front brakes and light on the rear brakes. Stopped almost exactly where I expected to, so I guess I did it right. Ah, this thing's incredible though. It feels like I'm still riding along even though I've come to a stop. But I guess I gotta snap out of it eventually. The others are waiting for me. I better head back now. I want a motorcycle. Welcome back, Green. Well, how was it? Uh, I'm amazed, to say the least. 
The sheer speed, the engine's vibration, and the feeling of the wind as you ride along? I've never experienced anything like it. No amount of horse riding could have ever prepared me for this. Just, just wow. Mm -hmm. I guess you've got some potential. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's trying to act all calm and composed, but his face is just screaming, Let me go back out and ride. Plain as day. Based on your report, it seems like you, well, gave it a good try at least. To be really honest, I wish you'd done better. <laughs> you and me both. I'm kind of frustrated with myself. It's not like it was a travesty, just being able to operate it is impressive enough on its own. It's not like anyone expected perfection out of your first ride. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but now we need to hear some more detailed impressions of each phase. Uh, let's do that back at the engineering building. Good plan. Uh, they're having so much fun with this. Uh, maybe too much. I like Crow. He's pretty laid back. Thanks, Green. The info you gave me should come in handy. <laughs> Glad I could help. I think she'll be a much more stable ride from now on. I'll have to be sure to tell Elise's mother about everything we learned today if they end up mass-producing horrible bikes. Elise's mother is the chairman of the Rhineford Group, isn't she? I didn't know you were familiar with each other. Mm, the Rogner and Rhineford families share a good relationship, actually. Oh yeah, they're both big names in Aurora, right? Yeah, Angie's dad's one of the group's biggest shareholders, too. Wow, they are pretty close. Well, no, uh, you know. Lisa's mother provided the engine and a number of other parts for the bike, too. So that's how you got your hands on everything. Mm, that's right. Although whether or not Reinford will actually mass-produce the bike is an entirely different matter. Their biggest goal is to turn a profit, so the only way it's happening is if we can show them that it would make money. Which is why we're currently trying to make it into something the masses can handle. And today... You were a big help in getting closer to that goal. Wow, I'd love to see that happen. Mm, looks like you get it. I guess my first impressions of you were right on the mark. Oh, I haven't properly thanked you yet, have I? Thank you for helping us today. Here's a little token of my thanks. Dragon Vein. Are you sure about this? It seems like a really valuable quartz. Mm, of course. I'm sure you'll put it to good use. Well then, Reen, thanks for a lot. Thanks for thanks a lot for your help today. I'd like it if you could come help us out next time we need a hand too. I'll cancel my plans as soon as you ask. <laughs> Please, just let me ride the bike. All I want to do is ride. Alright, so I think we finished all the side quests. I actually want to take a look at that quartz, though. Um, Dragon Vein. EP recovers on field and enemies drop more sepith. So it's like a better version of... Oh, we could give it to Emma, I guess. I don't know. It just sucks, because Emma's not really an ideal healer. Elliot's probably the best healer, but it doesn't matter. All right, let's go to the schoolhouse, which I believe is just down this way. I'm pretty sure there's nothing left to do. that there really must be something down in here anyway let's get this party started everyone from class 7 said they'd be willing to come along now who should I call okay so let's use Laura um, Emma Eusis. I don't like Elisa. Elliot? No, not Elliot. We don't want Elliot. Um, 
Maybe we will we'll bring Elisa as a backup healer. And... Machius, because he's solo level. There we go. Alright, that's what we'll do. Right, let's go. Everyone ready? Uh, ready whenever you are. I've been informed that you've discovered what I've been informed of what you've discovered during your previous investigations. Unlike certain elements among us, there's no chance I'll hold you back. You better not have been referring to me. I have no intention of slowing anyone down. All right, I'm counting on you. After what happened last time, there's no telling what we're in for. Keep your wits about you, everyone. Oh yeah, I forgot I brought Machius and Eusus. Ugh. And of course, they had to pick a fight with each other right away. Um, so I think we'll take a break here before we head down this elevator. Uh, next time we'll go and explore the schoolhouse, see what sort of monster we face, and then tell the principal about it, Principal Van Dyke. So as always, thanks for watching, and until next time.